heartfulness in essence is doing things with your heart intending things with your heart discriminating things with your heart anything and everything that you do refer to your heart before you execute <laughs> well acceptance is the main thing do you think you need it once you think you really need something like this something that can take you further in your consciousness if it can help you make decisions faster if it can make you emotionally stable if it can make you wiser if it can make you rightfully discriminative and if it can make you heartfully rich then this is the way i do believe that you know i should not go also into spirituality or things like this so much that my family life suffers at the same time i should not go into material proliferation so much that my spiritual life suffers i must be able to integrate them both masterfully not being able to do that will be like a bird trying to fly with one wing and that will be a, a tragic situation and that is why there is frustration anxiety tension depression because we often in chase for something ephemeral we have understood aspiration versus ambition you, know, you want to grab things rather than becoming someone in aspiration you try to become something someone noble someone you know a family can be proud of your wife or your husband or you know your children your parents can be or your friends can be so proud of look i have such a such a friend so that is becoming you see acquiring something will only make others jealous they can be superficially your friends and acquaintances and that is all to it and that will frustrate us deep down we know they are with me because and when we become something internally then it does not matter whether they recognize or do not recognize you are your own authority so today is in today's world you know when our people are struggling to you know, establish themselves uh, in in an organization in a society in a family i think inner guidance is more important inner guidance coming from your own heart very clearly it must come then it has some value to it see let me put it differently it's a logical argument everyone is chasing for happiness nothing wrong with it see? how would you enjoy your happiness if you are for example restless doing things here and there would you be happy you will not be so you have to be at peace right to enjoy happiness how can you be at peace only when you have a contemplative mind when can you have a contemplative mind when your thoughts are focused and when can you focus your thoughts when can you regulate your thoughts only when you can calm your mind and that happens only because of meditation so you can join the first step where we started with so meditation promotes though not directly but indirectly it will lead us to permanent happiness and that is only the beginning it's a stepping stone happy mind is more creative so if you are going to be a creative person so take a time go back relax pause and see how creative you can become calm mind can create much more than a turbulent mind well i i tell you I, in 80s and for most part of 90s bulls the basketball team from chicago led by michael jordan right phil jackson was their coach he would ensure that the team players at least for 10 minutes they would close their eyes and sit quietly and meditate this particular team i mean they ruled they were champions for years after years after years and when phil jackson moved after 
from Bulls to I think LA Lakers. There too he started teaching meditation. The Lakers became again the champions. It shows something, you see, that uh, team together, when they resonated mentally at the same level, the reciprocity is there. And if there is some sort of uh, enmity because of whatever may have happened, meditation washes it, cleans it away from your heart. Because you can't remain conscientious and also entertain bad feelings about your teammate. You'd confess to your friend and say, I'm sorry, I've been thinking like this. I, I should not be. So you'll end up be, you know, mellowing yourself. You'll become cleaner from inside. And this is also one of the practice that we offer in Heartfulness, how to keep our intentions cleaner, clearer, and something that can not only benefit me, but benefit the rest of us. Also, this aspect of cleaning that we adopt as a practice, it's almost like meditation. It's done in the evening. With this cleaning, we are able to let go of any complexities or opinions or impressions that we form about someone or about ourselves. We try to get rid of it. It's like they said, no, you go to sleep with clear conscience, your life will be better. That's what we try to do. See? How to remain with a clear conscience. You cannot just have it by wishing. You better do something about it. Adopt some practice that can help you do it. It will revolutionize. Because first thing you will be able to do is stop doing useless things. And once you have a very clear idea through meditation what I must do and must avoid, it's a win-win situation. I mean, if you want to bring Gita and uh, religious stuff into this equation, then you can should congratulate Lord Krishna and say, wow, what a finding he had, that Yoga Karma Sukha Osalam. He used to say, this is it. Through yoga, all your activities become kausalam, perfect. Yogic mind means a mind that is uh, balanced, that is connected to the higher self, with your higher consciousness our consciousness also. Then you can say, yes, it has helped me. You may give a name, fusion, doesn't matter. You may call yoga, doesn't matter. Call by whatever name. It is to create an eclipse between your conscience or your feelings and a higher conscience. That's all. Eclipse of conscience must be there. Otherwise, you'll remain confused between my mind says so and my heart says so. But when both says the same thing at the same time, it is eclipse of consciousness. It's all about heartfulness. You wake up in the morning, usual bathroom stuff, meditate afterward for a few minutes. I generally meditate for 25 to 30 minutes and then have breakfast or read a book for a few minutes. Go to office spend a day there in the office, interact with people there, launch new projects or you know new whatever it is, and come back home. While coming back home, I would rather play some music or listen to some inspirational talks by great guys. And once I reach home, I adopt that process of cleaning. Before I interact with family members, I go to my basement, sit down and do the cleaning of the impressions that we collect knowingly or unknowingly. We come back with so many emotions, right? And let me give you a small example why these impressions can be a problem. You go to a gym, you're all sweaty. And you come and hug your mommy or your spouse and say, oh, but you're sweating and smelly. They'll say, run away. Though they love you, please don't. Not now. Okay. Likewise, impressions also we collect from you know, our daily routine, which is unavoidable. Okay. Once we come home, we try to erase them. You'll feel so refreshed, unbelievably refreshed after going through this process. Then you start 
you know, when you are ready to mingle with family members. Now, once you have a routine, I think, uh, daily routine, your friends will also understand, your boss will also understand. Our boss will also understand about you, that no, not to disturb you between these hours. Uh, you know, once you have a fixed timing, they know, everybody knows that you are busy with this uh, spiritual practice. Well, I started my first business in pharmacy when I was 24. That was in New York City. And uh, like many of the immigrants, you know, we didn't go with tons of wealth. I went with $20 in my pocket, see. But I had tremendous courage. I will make it. And of course, the system also was so good. The system is always promoting the entrepreneurs. I started with very little amount, $10,000 from my pocket. And time came when I more or less retired in 2003. We had almost 14 drugstores in New York City. Yeah? And it's a, to me personally, it is more satisfying. During that period, the guidance that I got within from my heart was amazing. Tremendously amazing. What to do next, whom to hire, is this person right? Sometime you find something not very right happening around you in the business world and you try to be revengeful if you are not very careful. See? But you hold back. If an employee makes a mistake, it is natural that you might get upset. But then hold back on their anger and then see what to do and how to improve the situation. Because once you fire someone, there is no other expert going to come back. He is also going to make mistake. So it is better to allow that person to learn from his mistake rather than replace him. Now I tell you, the employees I have since 1984 are still with us. No one has left. And each chain, it continues like that. And now we have quite a number of stores now see, in, in New York City which are being looked after. My associates with whom I started then. They're all flourishing very well and all of them meditate. In, case, in times of trouble, if at all it comes, I think it's best to close your eyes and see for yourself. But the wiser thing would be not allow the trouble to surface in first place by not taking wrong decisions. It, always take rightful decisions when you have a meditative mind. I started this practice in 1976 when I was a third year pharmacy student in Ahmedabad. I was quite into it. Even before coming to this meditation, I used to do on my own, just thinking that whole body is full, filled with light. That's what how, that is how Swami Vivekananda meditated. But he did not give any particular method, methodology, and uh, way of life according to meditation. And in fact, in order to become a meditator in, in many organizations, you have to go through many you know, layer, layers after layers, and you have to pay various premium fees to come to that level. So anyway, <coughs> one of my friend who came, he was our classmate, he said, Kamlesh, you've been meditating almost every day. Why don't I take you to one trainer? She will help you go into trance right away. I said, why not? I was ever ready to try out something new. So we went and uh, it's, she was a very humble lady, housewife of a, in an Agrawal family, very pious person. She didn't study much though. And that is not necessary with this particular system. As long as your mind is broad, you know, openness of mind should be there. She said, Bhaiya, you would like to start meditation in Hindi. Then she gave me all kinds of philosophy and deterred me from it. And she said, look, I'll help you. I'll teach you how to meditate. And she started me on the path. And uh, that was my first session of meditation under proper guidance. And it was, I think, one of the most memorable meditation I have so far. <laughs> you 
humility and kindness the very powerful tools what anger can bring about and destroy relationship compassion and kindness can save the relationship okay? i should not aggrandize or i'm not trying to but uh, in our organization right few key people or people who are let us see about to buy a new home for themselves right us has a great policy 10% 20% of down payment and you prove certain level of income to prove that you are able to pay mortgage so we have number of cases like that you know employees would come sir can you help us it's easy to say no because he's hardly working with you for so many years but you develop a trust and once you extend your generosity there whether you call it kindness or generosity i don't know what you'll call it i don't like to cat- to be categorized in that field in that way but it is your duty not out of generosity or not out of compassion or not out of a kindness not to score points for that you may enter the heaven not even that is it again otherwise it will be a selfish motive then you'll have to be thankful to beggars for being beggars if otherwise if they were not there you know how would you buy your points and go to heaven so with our friends we say okay i'll pay ten percent on your behalf you pay it off whenever you can and they do and they are able to buy a house faster than other community members so things like that uh, helps us a lot you see if you so kindness to someone i think society will be a lot better india is a master of many good things one great thing that i have learned in our land that whatsoever we do has a consequence karma theory the fruit of our actions let us see if they are favorable i become happy if they are not favorable i am unhappy right now fruit of our actions whatever they be they are depending on the action itself if i had done a wrong sort of approach if i or action then it would be a different result not satisfying to my heart and this action depends upon how well i have planned it is a mind that has not planned properly remains anxious for the reasons but a person who has planned properly he is not anxious he is confident so preparedness is required and before that how would you come to rightful planning without rightful thinking and rightful thinking will come only when you have rightful ideation or ideas or intentions so you go back to intentions again simple thing i like to remain pure and simple when this is my goal i will not do any wrong thing i will not try to have shortcuts i will do whatever i have to do to make the project successful without creating complexity for the organization because i can't tolerate personally complexity it's a burden to the meditative mind generally with i meditated with an idea of uh, greater presence in my heart greater presence of i can generally think of godly presence in my heart so or there is so much of peace or you know poise uh, love in my heart and i just sit and meditate like that that's all later on when i am in deep of meditation depth of meditation and when i come out of it either at that time or during meditation some great ideas would emerge also it's not that you remain thoughtless during meditation some thoughts will definitely come though you are trying to regulate your mind and say oh i'm going to meditate on the presence of divinity in my heart but despite of all that other thoughts will come and that is okay suppose you are launching a new project the idea will come now when the idea of launching a new project comes to your mind there will be many other pros and cons developing in your mind now you are walking through a virtual path of the project see which you had not seen earlier 
when you are seeing virtually the project unfolding in front of you, you are able to see first of all what can go wrong or whom I should not be including as my team. Not out of enmity, but he's not the right person for that. So you will choose the right people, right process, right timing, right place, right protocol. You are able to eliminate what is not suitable for the project. So meditation somehow erases these things. But that's not the main purpose, as I said. The main purpose is something else. These are the side effects which can be beneficiary. Well, to me, inner leader is your inner conscience. Inner conscience is always the heart. Listen to your heart. And how can you listen to your heart well? In your own silence, in depth of your silence, you can listen to your heart better. So it's always good to have a quiet moment, close your eyes. Whether you believe in God or not, does not matter. Think of love, think of compassion, think of kindness, think of empathy, think of being a better person and meditate. It basically describes the heartfulness way of lifestyle. It, it describes various practices we offer and practically walks you through each practice. And here I like, I have demonstrated actually uh, in a scientific way. And uh, I have tried to demystify the spiritual aspect of meditation. And I have also shown how scientifically you can approach meditation without faith, without belief. Faith and belief they are, or trust, they are the byproduct as a result of doing something. So one should not expect such a thing. And I have also written uh, largely on an aspect of modern gurus who are trying to become you know, yoga merchants, exploiting people for money. You know. And here, I, it, through this heartfulness, you know, the broader practices are offered. They are at zero cost, you see, are, nothing is charged. See, I tell you a beautiful thing about this way of meditation. Here there is a use of pranahuti by the trainer. Let me explain to you what pranahuti is all about. Just as you know, physical body needs nutrition, balanced diet. We provide it because we eat food. The mental body also requires enrichment. We go to college, go to school, we watch various programs and enrich ourselves mentally. What about the third body, the soul? How will you, how can we enrich the soul? So you need to find someone who can transmit pranahuti, offerings of prana to the prana of an individual. Right? So trainers are trained and to experience this pranahuti, of course, you have to go to the trainer or use one of our master classes. What happens? Here, it's your individual experience. But whether it happened because of this pranahuti or because it happens to everybody whenever you close your eyes. So in order to differentiate that, I like to conduct an experiment like in, in a pharma industry when they find a new molecule, new medicine is found. What they do with that? See, let's see if it is for epilepsy. They compare the result of this new found drug with the placebo or with other already uh, found molecules, it is compared that, oh, with this today's new, I mean, today's medications versus the futuristic medicine, if there is any uh, benefit. So they study the three together, the placebo, the current, and the new molecule. And they see the benefits, that's all. So now when you have meditated for so long, without transmission or without this pranahuti, now you take up pranahuti and see it for yourself. In, in ha less than half hour, you'll know the difference. Okay, so I wish everyone actually experiences pranahuti and then decide that I am saying me baat karta hai ki bakwas karta hai. See? 
actually I love such people, especially a person who says I don't believe in God. He's very honest because he has not felt his presence, right? But for a person to say I believe in God without feeling his presence is a liar. Knowledge, let us see if it, if it is there because my grandma said so or my father said so, my books, religious books say so that God is there. It is knowledge. But if I can justify this knowledge with touch of experience, then it has value to my knowledge. It becomes stronger. So that is my attempt there. See, I'm encouraging our readers to appreciate experience more than knowledge. Well, it is very difficult. It's uh, your, your partner with the devil. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I give you from my personal experience, you know, when I was using iPhone. And, you know, for months I could not figure out why my left hand was getting tired so much. And at one point I felt as if my left hand was cut off and I felt so much of pain. Then I realized it is the electromagnetic radiation of this particular phone. This Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth frequencies are so intense compared to other phones. So I, I was totally destabilized. I would recommend all these high-tech people, as well as especially the children, younger children. Uh, best would be these children uh, doing this experiment at home. Try to grow sprouts in four different conditions. Right? 10 grams of some mung, put them in a teapot or something and add 20 ml of water. One cup you keep in uh, near the uh, phone with Bluetooth on, right? Another cup you keep near the Wi-Fi station. Third cup you put in your you know, normal room where nothing, no other activities are happening. And fourth room where you either do your puja or you are worshipping or you are doing your meditation. After 10 days, you see the growth, take the picture of all this uh, at, and compare it. Let your child decide what is good, what is bad. Right? So this, this results will be stunning. You cannot make mistake in understanding the consequences of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. I tell you another uh, problem I have because of Wi-Fi. After many months in the U.S., I came to Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad, we, have, we stay in an apartment building. When we bought that building, there were hardly one or two Wi-Fi's, you know, coming up on my computer. After a few years, when you, uh, you know, visit your place, there are more than 50 Wi-Fi, you know, to choose from. Nevertheless, there's so much of, you know, intense activities around. I could not sleep in my own house. I had to leave my place. Morning I came, afternoon I had to leave. So it's difficult. So you have to make a choice where to, uh, how far to go with this technology. It's, I think if you can have enough of sleep, it's better for you. Eight hours of sleep, nine hours of sleep is good. Better, more better it is for you. Sleep, I think, rejuvenates your whole system. There are a lot of scientific data backing it also. Why even wait for scientific data? The day you, are, you have not slept or you have slept hardly for two hours, what happens to you in the morning when you have to drive or make breakfast? You become cranky, you become angry. Even you start shouting at the passers-by while you are driving. Road rage is also partly because of the sleeplessness. The brain and spinal cord especially, they detoxify themselves during sleep. The lymphatic system is there. Biologically, we are helped with this lymphatic system. We have blood circulatory system, we have lymphatic system. Lymphatic system removes the toxins from things below. But the brain and spinal cord detoxifies themselves with the cerebrospinal fluid. They pass through 
the cellular gap. Now, at night, if you don't sleep, the brain cells, you know, they expanded. So the space remained constricted. So there is no fluid flow. The toxins are not removed. They remain in you. Toxins remain in your brain. So in order to have a proper shrinking of the cells to a normal level at, during the sleep, so that it can allow the passage to widen, so the flow can be, you know, without any interference or resistance. So it is because of this de detoxifying effect, you feel refreshed. And it is because the toxins are not gone, you remain irritated, angry, your mood changes. So it's up to you, I mean, how well you want to remain in good spirit. Sleep. If you want to remain in good spirit, sleep well. How this choosing of the succession, it also baffles me a lot. I was not expecting it at all. I was almost retiring in 2006. 2003, I had given up uh, most part of the business affairs to my associates. 2006, I said, okay, now it's time to say goodbye also permanently. So I came to India to be with my you know, master was in Chennai at that time and he didn't say much and at that time there were already some many under limelight who were to be kind of uh, but then one day he's, he decided and announced my name sometime in 2011 that so and so will henceforth will look after this organization and train individuals the way I have been training that's all and uh, life has changed after that, no doubt. From inside, not much. From outside, a lot. I try not to differentiate, actually. Internally, not much of a change because you remain who you truly are. If you are good, how much goodness can you add to it? To a meditator, if you are a good meditator, whether you become master or an expert disciple, it's the same thing. And I like to remain an expert disciple rather than a master. Considering yourself as master will pump your ego and that will destroy. So I choose to say I am an expert disciple. Or even, you know, like to take the last corner sometimes. As, as a meditator, I would just hide myself somewhere and meditate rather than coming in limelight. See, it's not good for your ego. Such a beautiful thing, you know, in Hindi, it's uh, Swabhiman, Gamand, and there's another word I'm not able to recollect. It has a beautiful way of expressing this ego. Let's say you are MA PhD, and you tell someone, I am MA PhD. There is nothing wrong with it. But guy like me who is never studied, and so I am MA PhD, that's a different sort of ego. See? Let me put it differently. Let's say if you are a flute player and you played your flute yesterday so nicely and the entire audience is on you know, standing ovation and so they've gone gaga. You feel good. Nothing wrong with it. Today you play different audience. You're playing the same raga. But you will, as an artist, you will not be happy to play at the same temper, with the same temper or same performance of yesterday. Though it was good, you'd like to make it better. Right? So here, you, we make use of ego for bettering ourselves, improving ourselves. Right? But the third scenario can also emerge. You see, everyone was standing and you know, clapping. Wow, there is no one better than me. In the whole country, I am the best. Then that is arrogance. So ego can have many faces. But I tell you, in a work environment, what helped me the most was the teaching of my first master. He said, remember, there is nothing wrong in thinking yourself to be great. Remember, there is nothing wrong in thinking yourself to be great but always think the other person is greater. So that 
you know in work environment if you if you have this understanding imagine uh, conduciveness resonance harmony that can prevail